Wow, take a look at this. Welcome to Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. This is definitely the furthest away from home I've ever felt. But anyway, come along and explore it with me as always. Let's go. me but I did actually want to start this video from my apartment. So I'm staying here for about five nights and it's worked out at about £20 a night which is absolutely insane. But I do have to be honest I think even this is cheap for Sofia. But that does bring me on to my first selling point of Sofia. Generally it is pretty cheap here and way cheaper than what you'll find in Western Europe. But let me turn you around anyway and show you the views. Right now this is a little bit of an awkward angle but I really do love this view and we've got Batosha mountain there which overlooks the city and then behind that we have the Rila mountains which I'll be showing you a little sneak preview of throughout this video. But anyway, let's head into city and let's get started. There you go, let's go. Time to explore the streets of Sofia. Let's go. Right here, so it is about 33 degrees today, so it is pretty hot, so it's a good job I've got my sun cream on. But literally just a few minutes away from my apartment, we've got this really interesting, uh, there's like sort of two monuments there and then a bigger statue there. But anyway, let's go and take a closer look. So yeah, it does look like it's some sort of monument dedicated to the Soviet army, but you can see someone's went and poured like some red and white paint on, and I don't know if that's something to do with the conflict in Ukraine as to why someone's came and pretty much spoiled it. Anyway, so yeah, we've got the, the main monument here, but it definitely looks as though, I don't know if you can see the colors of uh, blue and yellow that someone's painted across the monument. Definitely is some sort of protest as to what's going on at the minute in Ukraine. But I do love these sort of, how you find these monuments in the former Soviet territories. And there's definitely a couple around the city. But anyway, the city center is more over that way, so we're gonna head over that way and we'll probably see a few things along the way as well. Just turn in the corner, we have got probably the most iconic sight in the whole of Sofia. So just sat behind me here, we have the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral and it's no surprise that this is probably the main thing to see in the whole of Sofia. It shows for itself, but it is absolutely stunning and it definitely is a unique church, but it's also the largest Orthodox church in all of the Balkan states. But anyway, I still haven't had a look inside. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. Right now, quite surprisingly, it is free to get in, but you have to pay for photos and videos. So let's see if I can get away with it. There we go, mission complete. I'm like a ninja, you can't catch me. Anyway, let's carry on our little wonder of Sofia. So like most cities, it is a bit of a maze, sort of like a concrete jungle really. Uh, and I would be lying if I only showed you the pretty parts, but quite a lot of streets you see sort of quite run down, quite gray tall apartment buildings, which is probably just what most normal people live in. And you can see there's some more over there. Um, some nice street out over that way. Uh, and now I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite buildings in the whole of Sofia.
Right, and now that I've shown you a couple of the uglier parts, I think it's time to show you my favourite part of the whole city. Uh, so just behind me, we've got this lovely park. And you see the fountains there. But turning around, I cannot get over how beautiful this building is. It really is stunning. So this is the Bulgarian National Theatre, but you can see this like, it's like decorated with gold there. You've got these big grand pillars. It's painted lovely. And then we've got these chariots with the lions on the top as well. I think it probably is my favourite part of the whole city. And then just over my shoulder there as well, there's like loads of old blokes playing uh, chess and carts, which is nice to see. But then also even in the restaurants as well, like through the week, all of them just seem to be full. So I think in the summer, people just sort of enjoy chilling out, having food in restaurants. But it seems to be quite laid back, a little bit like in Brasov, Romania. So yeah, it's nice to see. Just a few minutes walk along from the theatre, we have got some very serious Bulgarian National Guards. And then just turning the corner, we've got some pretty impressive buildings right here. So we're pretty much bang in the centre of Sofia now, but right here in this part, we've got three pretty grand and impressive buildings. So these three buildings were built in the 50s, I believe, during the communist period, and this one here was the headquarters for the Bulgarian Communist Party. And I'm not sure how well you can see, but just at the top, we've got the Bulgarian flag waving there. But you can imagine maybe 70 years ago or so when the building was first built, it was probably the Soviet star, which flew nice and high there. Anyway, I think the heat's getting a bit much for me. It's time for a little lie down. We're gonna pick up where we left off, either later on or tomorrow. So I'll see you then. All right, now, hello, it is the next day. Yes, I am a time traveler. We're gonna carry on our little adventure in Sofia. Uh, an interesting little spot higher than just behind this building here so we're gonna head through that way so just hiding in between these big large modern buildings that date from the communist era sort of hiding away tucked inside we've got this church which is thought to be the oldest building in the whole of Sofia which is thought to have originated in about the fourth century and then just next to it right here we've got the Roman ruins which are pretty much scattered throughout the whole city but yeah I mean I think it's amazing really that you've got all this history and you can just walk through it for free and just explore it for yourself but there's numerous spots that I've seen throughout the city uh, with Roman ruins and there's also some in parts of the underground stations for the like the metro because that's how it was actually a lot of it was discovered so I think in about 2010, they were digging uh, to build the underground or, you know, some of the stations and they ended up finding and discovering maybe not this part, but some of the other parts anyway. So yeah, pretty incredible, really. And if you are a little bit of a skeptic, you're probably thinking there's no way that all of this is about 1,600 years old. And I think you're probably right. So I think some of it, small parts, which are original, but like these tiles and all these tiles down here on the floor, I think are probably sort of uh, like a rejuvenation project but even on the church as well I'm not sure how well you can see see there's some like older bricks and there's like a line there where it's obviously been I'm guessing the the top bit's been rebuilt so but anyway the history in Bulgaria does go a lot further back than that so let's go for a little wonder and I'll tell you about that so just leaving St George's Church behind which like I said it's about 1,600 years old, but I think the history in Sofia goes way further back even than that. So I think the city has been continuously inhabited for about 7,000 years, which makes you know the Roman ruins seem quite modern really, which is crazy to think about. But anyway, we're gonna head into the center, which is just around the corner, and uh, show you a few things around there. Right now, and just before we move down the main street as well, I want to be honest with you. So this definitely feels like this is the furthest I've ever been away from home. And I think that right there is one of the reasons to blame. So like me, you might turn up to the city of Sofia, Bulgaria, and you'll see there are funny letters everywhere. Now it's definitely a bit intimidating at first, uh, just as I showed you on that big building up there. 
So the alphabet they use here is actually called Cyrillic and it originated in Bulgaria and then it was later adopted and adapted by more popular places like Russia. So you'll probably, you know, when you think of those sorts of symbols, you probably think Russian. So as much as I would recommend coming here to visit, it is a beautiful place with lots of history. I think it definitely is a bit more of a rogue destination in Europe anyway. But right now we're gonna head and take a look down the main street and a picture nearly just flew in my head. So this is Vatosha Street. Anyway, it really is quite long and if you've got a good memory, you'll remember that the mountain that overlooks Sofia is called Vatosha, so this street is named after that, that mountain. Uh, so I think I heard the locals call this street Vitushka Street, I think, uh, so they can distinguish the two. But yeah, I just wanted to say as well, if what I said about the alphabet and the language put, puts you off coming a little bit, I wouldn't worry, especially if you're in, you know, main parts like this, speaking English, you know, you should have no trouble in bars, restaurants and even shops and stuff. So yeah, you can, you can still get by all right. You know, quite a lot of people still do speak English, which is very handy, so. Anyway, I'm not going to bother going all the way along because it pretty much is just a repeat of the same thing. We've got loads and loads of restaurants, bars, and it really does liven up quite a lot on a night time. So it's a lovely place to just sit, uh, watch people pass by and have some good food. But anyway, I'm going to head all the way over that way. It's about 30 minutes away, but there's this part of Sofia on the outskirts, which I really want to show you. So let's go and see that. Just while we're on our way, I wanted to show you this really cool little spot. So you can see that all the locals come and they fill up like big massive bottles of water all around here. But if you think you've found some nice cool running water to cool down in the hot summer sun, you'll be disappointed. It's absolutely boiling and it's hotter than what most people will probably have a bath with. And it doesn't taste very nice either. It's natural spring water and it tastes like eggs. Finally, after like a 50 odd minute walk to the complete other end of the city, we are finally here to the spot which I wanted to show you. So we've just got like the bus station there and the train station just there. So it's right next to those two things. And this was like the first thing I saw when I arrived in Sofia. Let me turn you around and show you this. So we've got like this massive, it's called Soviet monument sort of thing. And I'm guessing this is like, what would have been like like a communal area, like a meeting place. Also down below, there's also like some shops and stuff. But a lot of it is like really run down. You can see like the, the steps, the steps and stuff here completely fallen a bit. So it looks as though it's literally just been left to ruin really. You know, I'll, let me show you this bit. There you can see <laughs> everything is just completely fallen apart. But definitely adds a lot of character to the city you know I've shown you all the pretty parts but I think this is still one of my favorite bits see I suppose you can imagine maybe 50 60 years ago maybe not even that this place probably would have been buzzing with with people uh, people socializing and then just here as well we've got what would have been like a little little paddling pool but like the rest of it it's just completely fallen apart and I'm not quite not quite sure what that's meant to represent but it's like a, a woman carrying a child and before I wrap up the video anyway there's two little day trips which I want to show you which are well worth doing while you're in Sofia so let me show you those so first of all you can do a day trip to Rila Monastery which I would absolutely recommend it's roughly a two-hour drive from Sofia but don't worry you can book a self-guided tour on Get Your Guide for around 20 euros, which includes being picked up by the main cathedral and transport to and from Rila Monastery. And incredibly, entry into the monastery is completely free, despite how beautiful it is. And I don't want to spoil it too much, but if you want to see more, go to my video, Lost in Europe Part 9, on my channel.
Now, the other day trip is Seven Rila Lakes, which I would also strongly recommend. Although this trip is more of a hike, the reward is well worth the effort. Again, you can get transport on a guided tour for around 27 euros, but you will also need 25 lev, which is around 12 euros, to get the cable car up to the start of the walk. You can walk up, but honestly I really enjoyed the cable car ride. And again, if you want to see more of Seven Rila Lakes, head to Lost in Europe Part 11 on my channel. I think we'll probably leave it here. This is a pretty good place to finish, but I suppose this shows you why I said this is definitely a bit more of a rogue destination. But anyway, thank you so much for watching as always. I'm also doing like daily vlogs, uh, Lost in Europe series. So if you want to come along and join that, that'll be on my channel. So go and check that out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Come and visit Sofia. I'm not even done. Oh, and guess which idiot forgot to film an outro again. And if you haven't, go and watch my Lost in Europe series. Here's a little teaser.